This is Campaign 2012, brought to you by the News Herald and Lakeland Community College. Today we're talking with the two candidates for Lake County Clerk of Courts. The incumbent office holder, Maureen Kelly, is a, re is a Democrat, and her Republican challenger is Emily Teresic. Did I say that right, Teresic? Perfect. Good. My name is Jim Collins. I'm uh, executive in residence at Lakeland Community College, and I'm editor emeritus at the News Herald, and the real editor is uh, Tricia Ambrose. She's executive editor, and we're on the firing line together here, and uh, Trish is going to start out with the first question. Thanks, Jim. Thank you both for being here today. I appreciate it. Um, as Jim mentioned, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican. How does your political party shape your candidacy as well as uh, the running of the clerk's office, or do you think this should, in essence, be a nonpartisan race? We'll start with you, Maureen. It's how we get here. It's how you get through the office. You have to go through a Democratic or a, uh, this in the other party. You have to go through a primary and um, and work through, th through those situations. But I have to tell you that no decision I've made in the last three and a half years was based on party. It's really just based on good management principles because it is an administrative office. It's not, we don't, the only legislation we deal with is the legislation that is thrust upon us, positive or negative, and, uh, and that comes from outside of, um, of our area. So I would say that um, making it a nonpartisan office would actually be a, a novel idea. Uh, for me, I believe that once you are in office, it's a nonpartisan position in office because you are dealing with citizens who are Republican, Democrat, so on and so forth. But beforehand, with regards to the party that I am involved in, the Republican Party, it is, I am trying to form my goals for the office based on my party platform. You know, uh, lower the budget, less taxes, so on and so forth. Let's start with you this time, Emily, and then Maureen. Uh, what are your number, what's your number one priority for the next four years? If in office, my number one priority is to have the office running more efficiently through technology and innovation. Okay. Tricia? Maureen. Oh, Maureen, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I'm busy taking notes here. Um, this has been the mo this has been an interesting three and a half years because of the uh, of the tightening of budgets all over the county. We are I am currently I have twenty percent fewer staff in both my legal and title offices than when I took office in two thousand nine, and twenty five percent fewer dollars than my predecessor ever had. So we have had to be, and I use the term creative, but we've had to be creative in moving folks around, combining jobs, um, finding uh, more and more ways to, uh, I know it's a cliche, but doing more with less. And we have, we have been successful in those, in those areas. The folks that come into our office are no fewer. The cases are greater than in 2009 when we took office. Foreclosures still continue to be um, going up at, at a higher rate than we had hoped. We keep thinking that we've reached we've reached a plateau, and uh, the uh, second quarter results that just came out right now would indicate that we are once again um, going to go above our average of 1,500 foreclosure cases a year. I base that average on from 2006 to the present. So we, we've had to d find ways to do more with less, um, and uh, one of the ways that I've done that is I brought in my own mail machine because I was being uh, charged with a 90 thousand dollar a year administrative cost from the commissioners based on 40 percent over the cost of my postage as the largest user of mail in the county because we send out over 1300 certified certified mail pieces a month that turned out to be ninety thousand dollars so after negotiating with them saying don't I get a volume discount here they uh, they just kind of smiled at me and said that's just how we charge back this service and uh, so we, through the data board, we got something that would work with the system, and we now purchased our own mail machine and uh, we're leasing it, actually. It paid for itself in less than six months with the monies that we've been able to save. In addition to that, we, uh, I learned when I took office that the, uh, the rent and utilities for my two title offices were coming out of the general fund. And as soon as we were able to build up a nice balance there, 
um, in the budget of 2010, I offered to take that back, feeling that since I keep the revenues from that office in a rolling balance, that I should also pay. So that so that was another ninety thousand dollars that we have saved the county every year since then. Uh, Emily kind of alluded to this before, but we'll start with Maureen on this. Uh, Technology is certainly changing every single thing we do in our daily lives. How do you see it changing the work of the clerk's office moving forward, and how are you uniquely positioned to take advantage of those changes? Mm -hmm. Well, as somebody know, who knows how the office runs and knows the statutory obligations of the office, um, I think I am uniquely qualified in that regard. I am uh, been appointed by our association of the Ohio Clerk of Courts group as one of two people that are on the court technology committee of the Ohio Supreme Court and we are tasked with moving forward on setting up a statewide portal for the e-filing of documents. Um, again bringing in our, old mail, our own mail machine and we are, we are as close as we've ever been to actually um, e-certifying our mail which will save us a dollar ten cents on every certified mail piece so approximately fifteen hundred dollars a month. So we, we've worked with a, a, an amazing um, inf information technology staff, Eric Folkman, first and now under Ken Pintar. They have been amazingly supportive of all of those efforts. Um, and technology can only take you so far because there are some things that, um, that we are statutorily required to do that don't necessarily make sense. And when I, say to th when I say to the prosecutor, can I not do this? Can I deliver something to the treasurer's office and just have him sign off? and they say, nice idea Maureen, but no you can't. You have to send, if you're ordered to send something by certified mail. So I sometimes have to send certified mail to the treasurer or the prosecutor um, on these issues if that's what the uh, instructions for service have. So there's lots of ways that we could make this more, more, um, more efficient, um, but I don't have, I don't have the, uh, the authority to do those types of things. Emily, how do you think uh, technology will change the, the work at the clerk's office? Thank you. Um, there are, are a, f a few ways that I have been looking into wi with regards to technology. First of all, I believe that it will accommodate users of the, the website. For example, um, this is something that you know would be beneficial to do now. Would have when you click on the website, it is just basically for uh, English users. If we can maybe translate that to our documented uh, citizens and naturalized citizens, that would be beneficial, but also to uh, blind users of our website so that it would read and give you directions if they needed directions, so on and so forth. I also believe that technology could be used uh, to maximize synergies throughout the offices, the county offices. Ms. Kelly mentions her, her mail service in her office. In the administration building, there are quite a few offices you know, utilizing one mail room with multiple employees. If we could lease a piece of equipment and have codes per office using this one piece of leased mail equipment, we could save, I, I'm sure, a significant amount of money just in that way. So when I'm talking about technology, I'm talking, I'm looking at the big picture, courtrooms, how can we help each other and how can we, you know, minimize the overlap amongst the offices? Start with you this time, Emily. Okay. I've been in that office many times and there's a mountain of records in there. Right. A lot of paperwork. Uh, is this a nightmare to keep up with all the paperwork or is everything reduced to a computer chip that you can, uh, carry in your hand and everything going back to 1853 is on that. It, it, how much of a problem is record keeping in that office and paperwork? Okay. As someone who is from the outside utilizing the office when I have worked for law firms, uh, it is, the paperwork I'm, I'm sure is challenging and disorganized, but you could integrate the technology at an off-site location in a secure server. And that way, if something were to happen to the building, God forbid, or whatever have you, um, that would be, all of the files would be at an off-site location and they would be secured and it would be one single county server so that there would be, not be outside access to the server. 
And Maureen, well, is it a nightmare? It is a nightmare. And if only, if only we could, we could have a, a little chip that we could carry around with us. A um, couple things I need to correct is that, in fact, we do have a backup system and a server. That's uh, all the county information, not only the, not only the records from my office, are backed up on a daily basis and kept at a secure location. So that's already being done and has been done for some time. So our records are safe as are our microfilm records. We, at, at a certain point in time, we do destroy the paper and put it on microfilm, and those are also kept at an alternate location. And the other thing I need to correct is that we are, in fact, are processing mail for all of the judges' offices. The reason I haven't opened it up to the whole county is I'm doing that with my existing personnel. I'm not adding on county people. And I'm sorry to say that when I did bring on the mail machine, some folks in the county lost their job. Because again, as the largest user, when we pulled our services away, um, through attrition, I'm, I, I believe for the most part it was through attrition, people did lose their jobs in, in the county office. And, and uh, I, I feel badly about that. But um, I felt there's only so many things you have control over, and uh, my office is, is that. As far as the paperwork, we are moving files on a regular basis, but um, as an example, we had a gentleman come in today from Maine, and he wanted to look at the transcripts from the Lundgren case in 2006. So we had to find those transcripts. He wanted some original sources for a book that he was writing. Oh, I was going to ask you if he was writing a book. <laughs> yes, he is, and uh, it's apparently one chapter in a book and only 15 pages, but we were able to um, bring that down to him and also show him some documents that we have from the 1800s when Joseph Smith actually uh, moved, the, the court case that was related to his moving um, the Mormon church from here to Utah. So the, the paperwork is, uh, it's, it's of great value, the, the hard copy, but we are, um, we do have a case management system so that now no one is typing anything. And we do have a document management system so that when the documents are received, they are immediately imaged. And currently, that is being seen by all of the judges and their staff. And since I've been in office, we've been able to open that up to, and again, I, I have to give credit to our IT department for this, but we were able to open those images up to the prosecutor's office and the public defender, the um, sheriff's office, job and family services, and I'm missing adult probation. So these are five offices that used to have to come into my office on a reg almost a daily basis to look at documents that now can view, view them in their own office. So it's been a tremendous resource and a benefit, not only to them, but to our staff who has that many fewer um, disruptions, interruptions during the day. We're almost up to our break time, and I think we'll take it now because we won't have time to get a full answer before our break. So. Let's insert our com commercial for the college right now, and then we'll come back in a minute. Sometimes the things we take for granted suddenly become really important. I always thought Lakeland was for someone else. Then I lost my job. I realized I needed to learn more in today's job market. I needed Lakeland. Lakeland gets you ready for good new jobs. It'll fit your schedule and you can't afford it. Lakeland really comes through for us. In Lake County, opportunity starts here at Lakeland. We're talking with Maureen Kelly, the Lake County Clerk of Courts, who is a Democrat incumbent, and her Republican challenger is Emily Tereshik. And Tricia, we're gonna ask you for the next question. Thanks, Jim. Um, as you finish your first term, Maureen, what would you say the greatest accomplishment of your tenure thus far has been as a reason why voters should give you a second term? And then to you, Emily, why is that not sufficient to return her to office? Why should you be elected? There's a number of accomplishments we can talk about, but I think it's managing the, uh, the human component of uh, managing retirements, uh, moving folks around. As I mentioned, I have 20% fewer staff in both of my offices, 50, 40 people now instead of 50 from when I took office. So um, those are some of the issues. We have, um, and, and those, are, those are difficult. Every day I use my education and experience of managing a large staff in actually handling the human resource issues of that. And although we, can, we have people upon, upon whom we can rely, it is an independently elected office and we do make these decisions ourselves. The, um, in addition to that, uh, we have opened up uh, uh, Saturday services at our Title Bureau. I'm particularly proud of the fact that we have changed the focus from the East Office, where we used to have two-thirds of our staff, of the Title staff, um, and Wycliffe, where we had one-third. We have switched that around and capitalized 
on the fact that Cuyahoga County closed their Mayfield Heights title office shortly after I took office. So we began putting more staff uh, and opening up on Saturdays there, and we have turned it around where now 60% of the title work is being done in Wycliffe and 40% in the Perry office. Um, and when I, when I talk about that 60-40%, we last year collected just short of $46 million in state sales taxes and fees, 45700000 and some thousand. So it's a, it's a massive operation. Um, along with this, we've been working on upgrading our automated, automated title processing system from version 2 to version 3. We should be putting that in place early in January of 2012, excuse me, 2013. Um, I am working with Judge Lucci, who is in charge of court technology, to put a portal in place. Uh, we've, we've had that WebEx and we're meeting with those folks too. So we hope to be e-filing in a, in a regular basis and I, on, a, on a very soon basis. Um, again, the attorneys ask every single day when they come in. So I'm happy to say it's on, it's, it's on target to happen probably within the next year, if not before. Uh, customer service is a priority for me. People who come to my, particularly my legal office, are not having the best days of their lives when they have to come in because of divorces, foreclosures, judgment lien issues. Uh, and so we, we treat them with courtesy, with respect, and we answer their questions to the best of our ability without giving legal advice, which we are not qualified nor allowed to do. So I should be returned to office because I have good bipartisan support. Um, as I would say to people, if, you, if you're not sure about who to vote for in this office, ask your attorney or your car dealer. Or your car dealer? Or your car dealer. <laughs> and Emily? Well, could you repeat what? Sure. So, so it was, she has pointed okay. out some of her highlights as Correct. to why voters should re-elect her, and, and why do you think that those achievements aren't sufficient for her to get re-election, that, that you should instead be put into the office? Right, right. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, for one thing, I know that a performance audit has been completed, uh, right, uh, I, th I believe in the beginning of office when Maureen took over, and I do not believe that most of the suggestions have been implemented and that would have the office running more efficiently and for less money. I know that there have been budget cuts. Um, unfortunately, the office is running at a smaller amount of staffing, but that is something that is a reality today with our economy, and I, th I believe that we need to embrace that as a challenge to become innovative and creative and integrate the technology to have us doing more for less. Okay, I'll start with you this time, Emily. We've heard the dreaded word foreclosures. Uh, is there any hope? Is there anything in sight? Uh, is this a problem that's getting worse and not better at all? What, how long has it been? We know how long it's been going on, but is it at a peak now? Is it leveling off at all? Or how do you see the future in the world of foreclosures? The world of foreclosures. <coughs> well, my simple answer would be it depends on who is to be elected for president and how the economy is going to be shaped and job growth and what we are going to create here within the United States, within Ohio, within Lake County, if we could create more jobs in, within our county and if us as elected officials could work with the other elected officials to promote job growth, then I, I foresee foreclosures, you know, will not be as much of a problem here in Lake County. Or do you see any end in sight for the? I wish there were a simple answer. There isn't a simple answer. Uh, foreclosures, uh, we've gone through several waves of foreclosures now. Um, the peak being um, 752 in 2010. They said last year they dropped, but they look like they're climbing again. Uh, foreclosures happen for reasons other than uh, they sometimes come because of health issues. They sometimes come, foreclosures happen because someone has died and the family doesn't wish to take on the issues of the home. And we deal w on a regular basis with people, with just people in tragic circumstances who call our office um, often because they are dealing with the bank on a loan modification, but no one has notified the law firm and they continue to move on. So these people who feel that they have actually gotten to a point where they can modify their loan 
will call us up in just absolute terror that the bank has continued to file a lawsuit. So there's a lack of communication there. We support well the mediation program of the, of the court's office. And um, early in 2010, I pulled together information that hadn't existed before, which is actually the foreclosures that happen when they are filed in my office um, for each quarter. And we send that to all the municipalities. That's been a tremendous help to John Rogers and um, Treasurer John Crocker as they go around to talk about the land bank. He wouldn't be able to have this conversation because communities had no idea how many homes were foreclosed upon within their communities. Previously, from the planning department, they got the numbers from sheriff sales, which could happen six months or two years down the road. Um, the report that I have pulled together is foreclosures um, as they are filed in my office. And then the municipalities will then look on my docket to, be, to see how they go through. But they're able to see, by a, on a quarterly basis, per, per, um, per village or township city, about these foreclosures. Um, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think that uh, even if we have a change at the top that it's going to make much of a difference because some of these things, some of these people are already long down the road into foreclosures. Um, what do you see as a couple of the key um, traits or characteristics of an outstanding clerk of courts? And if you could give a couple of examples of how you feel you embody those traits. You're looking at her. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I, I do think you have, to be, you have to be a listener. I find um, very often that when my staff comes to me with a question, I have to actually um, peel away from the question to actually find out what the, what the real, what they're looking for. They'll come to me and they'll say, should I accept this filing? And I say to them, you've been doing this for 15 years. Why are you asking? Um, rather than give a simple answer of a yes or no, I then, then they'll tell me why the, what is different about this particular filing and then what we need to investigate on that behalf. So I think you need to be a good listener. You need to be organized. You need to be someone who can deal with 50 different personalities. Well, in this case, 40 different personalities. We deal with the judges and the judges' staff, people that come in through the, through the door. We deal with car dealers and the casual salesperson at our title bureau. So you need to be um, compassionate, you need to be organized, you need to be innovative, uh, and you need to have you know, good character uh, and, and be able to, to measure on a regular basis your own, your own performance and to look back and say, um, anytime something happens, is there a way we could have done that better? Emily? I believe for this position, you are dealing with uh, many different circumstances, many different people, so you need to be open. I think you cannot have high expectations of what people are coming through the door for, what people are asking you for. You have to be prepared for challenges that are, are going to come your way. I believe you also need good leadership skills. Um, I also believe that you need good management skills because of the staffing. And um, I also believe that you, you need to be somewhat of a take charge person and want to educate your staff. You will want to keep your staff educated and up to date and you need to be a motivator. And I, I know that I have those skills. I have proven leadership skills as a school board member. I, and as a school board treasurer, I was in charge of overseeing $2 million budget for two separate schools. Um, I have management skills from managing state senate campaigns and also a previous business that I owned. And I have technological skills and legal training. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, Ohio has 88 counties and every single one of them has a clerk of courts. Do they all operate independently of each other with, the, with no outreach? Or is the fact that we're involved in multiple jurisdictions for, say, state senate districts or congressional districts or court of appeals districts, does that cause any kind of a working together for clerk of court? Tell, tell, give me some sense of if there's any cooperation among them, how it works. OK. Um, I, as you know, I'm not in office. but. Uh, I'm assuming that there is a cooperation amongst them. I, I am hoping because if I am in office, I know that I will be reaching out to see what has worked well or not worked well for others. 
um, throughout the state and or throughout the state and all of the counties. I would like to look at a county that's similar to us in population and demographics, see what's worked well for them. I know in Columbus and, and Franklin County, they have a much larger staff and much more to deal with, and they, ha they are working with the e-filing, and um, the technology has been in place, and I, I'm curious to see how that's working for them and how we could implement that into our system as well. Maureen, is there any congenial working together with other clerks, or is that not necessary? Oh, it's 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 one of the ben one of the true benefits of the job. We have an amazing association called the Ohio Clerk of Courts Association, where just driving to Columbus and having lunch with someone is an educational experience because you sit next to a seasoned clerk who will share with you some of those things. As we often um, we, as we often joke, there's 88 counties and there's 88 different ways of doing things. But um, we are actually all under the same authority of 23032, the Ohio Revised Code, which gives us our authority for the office. Uh, as far as the, um, the, the different levels of cooperation, there are five counties within the Ohio 11th District Court of Appeals, Ashtabula, Trumbull, Portage, Geauga, and Lake and we all use the same case management system and that was when it was put in place there was there was that issue that at least when we are able to open those files to the Ohio Board of Elections we are actually able to do th they have a different system unfortunately but we uh, we have that cooperation so and actually that we use the same case management system as 44 of the 88 counties so anytime you have a question about you know, I'd like to get this kind of report. You send out an email blast, and usually within an hour, you'll have several people that will call back. So the cooperation is is um, is amazing. We uh, the reason we go to Columbus is for education, and uh, I after my first year in office, I am I am co-chair of the education committee with my colleague Denise Kaminsky from Geauga, and the purpose of us going down there is education. So we have an educational component, usually an hour, an hour and a half every single monthly meeting where we're able to impart knowledge. So even the seasoned clerks can learn something about uh, collection bureaus or um, from the Ohio Attorney General's office. So the cooperation is just amazing. And if I ever had a particular question, I can pick up the phone and any clerk of court, whether I know them well or not, will always take my call and answer my question. So it's one of the true benefits of this office and, and one that I continue to look forward to, to utilize. We have less than Two minutes left. Do you have a question or should I throw in my campaigning one? Go ahead. Okay. Maureen and then Emily. Uh, how do you campaign for an office like this? Uh, what's the best way to campaign and uh, does it cost too much to, to run a campaign in this day and age? About a minute. I think one of the ways that you campaign for this office is answering the question about what the clerk of courts does, because that's often the question that I get. And it's most people know uh, of us because of the legal department. They, they assume that we're clerk of courts only, but to also let them know about the uh, tremendous financial uh, benefit that the auto title uh, that the auto title which I also manage is to this office. Um, does it cost too much? Yeah, I think it always costs too much. It would be nice if, if we had a, a, f a forum where we could tell everybody at one time about what we're doing. But uh, I do think that it's, um, it, it's the best way is to educate people about the importance of the job. The responsibilities are vast, but the, um, but the, the, uh, the focus is narrow and and I, I just need to say one more thing about the performance audit is that was a voluntary thing. I'm the only county official to have done a performance audit. And uh, always surprised when it comes up as something that was, that's uh, looked upon as not a, not a benefit to myself and the county. Okay, the last word is yours, Emily. Okay, last word is um, the performance audit was paid with taxpayer money, so that's why I believe it's an issue. And as far as campaigning, I believe grassroots campaigning is the way to go about campaigning for this office. People are not aware of what the clerk of courts does. They are not aware of the title bureau being um, uh, connected with the clerk of courts. And you need to educate them and tell them how important it is. And that is the last word. Thank, Thank you, Maureen. You. Thank you, Emily, <laughs> Thank for you. being with us Thanks, today Tricia. for an interesting discussion on the office.